Welcome to the How's the Market podcast, a podcast that is built for you, where we talk to agents, to leaders in the market, to people that are talking about what is happening right now so that you can give the best advice to the clients you serve and make an impact. And, you know, this week we've got uh, an impact maker in Treasure Davis. Uh, She leads the Treasure Davis team in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and tells a phenomenal story about what they are doing in the market to make a difference right now. So listen for Treasure and just how she cares about people and specifically what they're doing tangibly to care about people and grow their business at the same time because she's going to break it down. So with that, let's go ahead and hop right in. Well, Treasure, it is good to have you on the podcast today. I'm grateful for for you joining. So thank you for making a few moments to, to spend together. Thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. You got it. You got it. Well, you and I have known each other for for several years. Um, You've got an amazing team. But for somebody listening that maybe doesn't know Treasure Davis, doesn't know the Treasure Davis team, tell us a little bit about you and your team. You're there in Colorado Springs. But how long have you been in the business? Tell us just that backstory. Yeah. Well, I am about to celebrate 19 years in the industry. That's awesome. Yes. Got licensed in 2005. And um, I actually was a nurse prior to getting into real estate. Um, and I also worked at a prison. Wow. A medium security male prison, which you wouldn't think goes hand in hand with real estate, yet somehow it does. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do in the prison? Um, I worked for the warden. And okay. uh, the last job I did was getting together the files for the cases um, when the inmates would sue for the attorney generals. So wow. it was a really great career. I think it really launched me into doing that. I've always been an entrepreneur. Um, so my husband and I have bought businesses, built them up, sold them off. Um, we've done three previously. So um, when I was doing that, my husband and I lived in a really small town in Colorado. And um, I had a wedding store, worked at the prison. My husband had a sprinkler business, worked at the prison. And we were working four jobs, working hard, and we were not able to like get ahead. Right. And my father-in-law, who was in real estate in Colorado Springs, was always at baseball games, living the best life, you know, making great money, able to afford things. And I was like, I can do that. So I got licensed in 2005, moved my family up to Colorado Springs. Um, that's when they did stated income loans, which we all know <laughs> right. that I remember out. it well, yeah. <laughs> and um, we quit our state jobs, left all of our benefits behind. And I was like, I'm going to take a go at this. And I think like so many people, once I got into it, getting licensed was the easy part. And then I realized, oh my gosh, there's a lot to this. Right. And there's a lot of liability and there's a lot of ways to make mistakes that are easy just from being inexperienced for people. Um, And I'm so thankful for the mentors that I had literally from day one walking me through that. And I think a lot of people like look at where we are today and they're like, oh, it must have always been easy. It must have always been like this. Like, you know, they've always been selling this number of houses and doing all this business. But, you know, the first year in real estate, I think I sold maybe seven houses. Hmm. And I was in a new market that I didn't know. I'm from Colorado Springs, but I didn't grow up here. So I didn't come in with a sphere. I didn't come in with this great network. You know, I literally was like, what do you do? And it was figuring out what niches worked for me and which niches I was willing to do to make a go at it. Um, And I'm thankful that I learned those lessons. I don't necessarily want to go you know, back to doing for sale by owner open houses. Right. But I'm glad that I learned on doing them and learned about, you know, how people think and how people, what d- really drives their decision making. Right. Thank you for sharing that story. That's an amazing story. I didn't know that about you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. C- congratulations too on 19 years. Thank you. Uh, in the business. Next year will be the big 20 year celebration. So. And I'm going to host it at Keeping Current Matters headquarters. 
All right, come on down. We'll sit by the fire here and uh, and we'll do that. So, yeah. well, Treasurer, I, I'm so grateful for you sharing that because I think the point that you make of somebody sees Treasure Davis or the Treasure Davis team, and you're out there, you've been in events and things like that, and they think, gosh, I don't know, you know, what that's like. What was it like for Treasure starting out? And I got to think too, back in 05 with stated income loans, things were, you know, sort of similar to the last couple of years where things were you know, a little bit uh, winded our back, maybe is the best way to say it, very different market. How did you navigate that? Because you're then in the business a couple of years and 08 rolls around, right? Did you, what was that journey like? You know, when you're a newer agent, I don't think you really know. Yeah. You don't know that this is the hardest time because you're not coming off of, you know, the last That's a great point. Of years. So yeah. for me getting started, I was like, oh, this is the market. And going through all of that, I remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, like doing <clears throat> bank owns and having all that done is really hard, you know, and having water turned off in Colorado and freezing temperatures and turning water on. And, you know, all of those programs, I think, taught me so much. Um, but I don't think that as a new agent, I really understood the impact 08 had on so many people. Right. Um, and I think that's probably what a lot of agents are maybe feeling a little bit now. Is, well, you know, I think that, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I think that's the encouragement to anybody starting in the business or has started in the business the last six months is you're like, okay, this is what I got. Yeah. Right. And I think this is the best. I mean, if you can make it in this market. Right. This is like the 05, you know, this is the 08 market, if you will. I mean, a little bit better, of course. Sure. But this is kind of that market of you're not coming off of those two years when things were easy. Just kind of like when we were doing stated income loans, you really needed a pulse to get a loan. <laughs> right. And obviously now things have changed, but it was kind of the same as like buying and selling during COVID. Right. You know? It was just a frenzy free for all. So I really think that people getting into the business now in this time that are newer have the greatest potential because as long as they're willing to do the hard work and really lean in, they're going right. to they're gonna thrive. It's a great point. It's a great point. I don't know if you're going to say something else, but the, the point of you don't have the sort of rearview mirror of this is what we used to do or this is how it was – uh, is is critically important. I think a, a ton of it's a ton of motivation and encouragement for somebody new, and it's a realization for people that have been in the business. They're like, okay, I got to do things differently. So, when at what point did you start to build a team? Yes, you know, going back to that, I think what happened to a lot of us veterans that have been in the market for a while is COVID really, you know, put a put a match on everything that we had been doing and really, you know, jumpstarted everything for lots of people. And then over the last, I would say year, things simmered down and now we're needing to do the things that we used to do that I think some people don't want to go back into doing, Right. but we need to do them because they're the right things to do. And the basics always, when we get back to the basics, the basics always win. Yeah. And I think that's something for like the veteran agents like myself is like, you need to get back into that learning mode and you need to do the things that got you here. Obviously tweaking them with AI and technology, but I think that there's a lot of lessons to be learned in that as well. Because I hear so many people that are like, you know, my phone's just not ringing like it used to be. And I'm like, <laughs> in what world do like people call you? Like right. you have to be the one having those conversations and doing the outreach and, and doing the things that matter and surrounding yourself with the people that you love, that you work hard with, you know, and following up with your past clients. I mean, the stats from NAR um, are crazy on they liked who they worked with, but then they didn't return back to working with that agent. It's like, oh my gosh, there is an opportunity right there in our database. Right. Such a good point. Such a good point. So journey of the, of, of the team, we were going to talk about that. When did you start building a team and where do you sit today? Yes. So I started building the team roughly 12 years ago, right okay. on the cusp of when teams were just kind of emerging and people were trying to figure them out. Of course, some people had them, but they weren't really a household name. Right. And it wasn't really what you did. Um, 
And so I started with a really great, at that time, she was an assistant. And I always say a good assistant will double your business. They will take so much off of you that you can, you're able to lean into what you do now. Um, now she's been with me for 12 years. Um, she's my listing manager and I could not do what I do without her. She has helped me leverage myself to the point of being able to get back more time and lean and do the things I love, like coaching for Tom Ferry and doing all of that stuff that I couldn't do before. Um, the way the team actually got started is actually a pretty funny story. Go, so, yeah, I want to hear it. I was doing a transaction with an agent and um, I friended her on Facebook. This is when Facebook was still newer. She's been with right. us almost 11 years and um, she wouldn't accept my friend request. And I was like, that's so weird because the transaction's going great. Our clients are happy. We're about to go to closing. And then on the day of closing, she accepted my friend request. And on there, she posted, just closed my first transaction. And so that's when awesome. I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, like I had no idea. Like usually you could tell when someone's new because things take longer. You know, you need to lean in and help them with questions, which of course is great. You know, we were all new at some time and we still, you know, need help. And so I immediately called her and I was like, I just got to say, I had no idea that this was your first transaction and you did an outstanding job. Like That's awesome. Congratulations. I would love to meet you for coffee and, you know, just get to know you better. I think you did a great job. And so we met for coffee and in the back of her mind, she was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to recruit treasure. And, um, this is going to be great. You know, cause at that time I was probably doing 60 transactions myself roughly. Okay. Um, and so we met and I was like, oh no, 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 I'm not going there. I'm not recruiting you. Like I'm doing none of the sorts. I just wanted to meet you. And so we stayed in contact and stayed friends. And then as my business picked up, I was like, well, I have leads that I can't take care of and you would do a great job with them. You know, can I connect you with them? And so I connected her with people and then she started getting so busy. But then and that's she, even before she joined up with you. Yeah, she was at her company and I was at my company. And then finally one day she came to me and she was like, okay, by the time that I pay you a referral fee, my company split and all of that. There's not a whole lot left over. I would like to come over and join your team. And I'm like, I don't, I don't have a team. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. And she was like, no, I would really like to join you. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know about all that. I'm just selling houses. And so she's actually the one that encouraged me to start a team and to do all that. And we came up with a name together and um, I still to this day fight her on the name of our team. Um, because I'm like, it should be something like, you know, the mountain group or something like that. And right. she, no, your name, you're established, like it needs to be this. Um, and so she's been with me 11 years now. Um, and she's phenomenal, but I always tell her like the team is all because of you because That's awesome. I fought it. And so now fast forward, um, we have nine admin, we have 15 agents, and last year we closed 417 transactions Wow! with a pretty small, but mighty team. Yeah. Um, That's amazing. Thank you for yeah. sharing all that. <laughs> it's great. What's her name? Her name's Leanne Potts. Leanne Potts. Le yeah. Shout out to Leanne. Shout you know? out to Leanne. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. I appreciate you sharing that story. Um, I think in that, in just even doing what you saw at the right time is just the right thing led to building a team. And that's really, it's really neat. Yes. And it's, it's been, you know, from the start of the team, it, it's always been about surrounding ourselves with the right people, not just anybody and living yeah. up to our core values and, and who we are. Um, and really just surrounding ourselves with great people that lead with integrity and take really great care of people. Like, on our team now, there is not anybody that I would say, oh my gosh, I'm nervous about how they conduct business or hold themselves accountable or take great care of our clients. And I also am really proud of the fact that they truly believe that everybody has the right to home ownership. 
Yeah. And that is impactful because I think a lot of people can say that, but then when, you know, an opportunity comes in and they're like, Oh my gosh, they qualify for this. That's not going to happen. They push it aside. But I've seen them firsthand say, well, no, I'm leaning in. Yeah. Because everybody starts somewhere. Is there a, is there, is there a story from your team that's happened recently or that stands out in your mind where that happened? There are a lot of stories about this. Um, mm. I can remember um, one of the stories that is very near and dear to my heart is when I was first getting started. And I think this has really led to the success of our team and who we are as a culture and who I've surrounded myself with. I really believe feel the same way. And I've seen them walk this line as well. And it was one of my clients. Um, his name's Michael. And he is a veteran, and he was in Iraq. Um, at the time, he was a contractor. And so he would work really long hours. Our time difference was different. He knew he was coming back to Colorado at some time. Um, and he was like, nobody will work with me. I've had some credit challenges. I've had some things going on. And everybody keeps like blowing me off. And I, and I was like, well, I'm not going to blow you off. Like, Let's figure this out. So I got him in touch with someone that could do some credit counseling and I just stayed in touch with him from a genuine, authentic place of like, you know, how's it going over there? You know, what's going on? You know, and um, this is when times were, they're tough over there anyways, but this is, you know, before they had really a lot of amenities back there, you know, for basic necessities for right. our military. And so started following up with him and it took us, took him some time to save up and to do some things and, you know, to really get over the mindset that he deserved a home. And fast forward, it took us three and a half years. He ended up coming back to Colorado. Um, he sent me a really beautiful, um, gift that was like, um, like butterflies, like preserved butterflies. That was, they were beautiful and exquisite. And, and I don't really know the story of, you know, behind that. And he also sent a flag that had been shot by, um, indirect fire and he had it boxed into a shadow thing. And we just became friends. I'm married. He's married. There was nothing weird going on, but it was just a really great friendship of like, I'm here to support you. However long this journey takes, because I believe that you deserve this home. And we ended up finding him a great town home and the town home worked out great for him. And he lived there for many years and then they decided to move. They were having another baby. And so they were moving down to Texas and um, the equity that he made from selling that home made a generational impact on his family because wow. no one in his family had owned a home before. Wow. And so those are the stories that we have so many of stories like that of like, you know, it took a long time. Yes, there was perseverance, but it wasn't just like you're ready to buy a house. It was like, hey, how's it going with this? Okay, that's a challenge. Like, let's, how do we overcome that? How do we meet you where you're at and get you to where you want to be? And just being able to see the impact for his family was inspirational. And we have the same story with our team. You know, we have people on our team that have, I'm actually sitting next to one of them. His name is Dean. Um, he'll sell 50 homes this year, every year. He's a great runner. He's a great athlete. But when he joined our team, if you don't mind me sharing, okay. Dean. Okay. So he was a teacher and, you know, teachers don't make what they need to make in this right. country. And so he could not afford a home. He had student debt. Um, he was driving an old car. He was a great worker, great teacher. His kids loved him. He taught middle school, which hands out to any teacher that teaches at all, but teaches middle school. As <laughs> I hear well. that. I have a middle schooler and I'm like, please, thank you. <laughs> and he went from doing all of that to joining our team. Fast forward, it's been eight or nine years that he's been on the team now. He has owned, he owns a home, has rental properties. He's able to travel. He's able to run marathons across the country, sell 50 homes a year. 
and take amazing care of him. And I know that he takes amazing care of people because his former teachers that taught him and, you know, when he was growing up and his students are coming back and buying homes from him today and staying in touch with him today. And I just am like, that's so inspiring. Like, it's not just about selling a home. It's about weaving yourself into the journey, however it fits in. Right. That's, that's powerful. And tell Dean, thank you uh, for allowing you to share that story. How many people are sitting there? The only, only Dean. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, you know, one other thing I wanted to share really quickly, just like who we are as a team and as a culture. So we have a couple of um, virtual assistants, which is okay. pretty popular these days. And one of my virtual assistants has been with us for over five years. When he started with us, he rented um, a little, I'm not sure the right word for what you would call it, but his home didn't really have any walls. And so the rain and the weather would come in and cause a lot of problems for him and his daughter. And so over the years, um, one of his first paychecks, the first thing that he did, and he shared it because we do, um, we do Zooms together and we meet together and we talk about like, what we're grateful for, what our win was, what our affirmation is. And I remember him saying to us, I was able to buy my daughter a bed and she's never owned a bed before. And we were like, oh my gosh, like we have beds. Our children have beds, you know, and just not really putting the context into it. And so over the years that he's been with us, watching him upgrade his living situation and then to being able to buy a really nice truck over in the Philippines and him just being like so grateful for what he has and what he has accomplished and how hard he works um, really speaks to, I think, who we are as a culture. And I think the one thing that I would want people to take away from this is, you know, you want to build a culture that speaks to who you are and your Mm -hmm. culture may not be the way that, you know, we see our culture, but you really want it to be. And I think a lot of people want this intention of being from a place of, you know, how do we want to show up for other people? And, and how do we want to come alongside of them? And how do we want to make sure that everything that we do is genuine and coming from a great place? It's, I always say, when you do things right by other people, the money follows. It's second. Yeah. Yeah. It's never about the commission. It's never about the next deal. It's never about any of that. It's like, yes, we sold 417 houses, but each single one of those people has a story. And we were alongside in that story to meet them where they were in their journey. That's awesome. That's, I really appreciate you sharing each one of those stories yeah. about the team yeah. and, and just the impact. I mean, it's the word, you know, that, that your team is making all across Colorado Springs, maybe even further. I, I don't know um, in Colorado. So thank, thank you, you for that. Yeah. Thank you for the platform to share that. I've never yeah. shared that on a podcast or speaking anywhere. So thank you for the platform. Well, listen, I think sometimes it certainly happens to us at Keeping Current Matters in a different way, but in for teams and folks in your seat too, we get so busy doing what we're doing, we forget about that. We forget about the impact. You know, I try to mention it every time we do a podcast or, or if I'm doing something, when – you know, when you come here for your 20th cele- 20th year celebration, Treasure, and you bring the whole team, there's a wall uh, here at Keeping Current Matters that we believe that says we believe every family should feel confident when buying and selling a home. And that's what drives what we do. You know, your team as well driving to say, hey, we want to take the best care and educate and help people, uh, you know, achieve the dream of home ownership and make a difference in their lives financially and personally and the intangible ways and all the, all the things that you've shared. Um, that's amazing. And I just, uh, I'm grateful for you sharing it. Great for your, for your team and doing it and making an impact in the world. Anytime you can do what you love and make an impact in the world and do it with people you love, that's a special thing. Absolutely. And you know, this obviously is the keeping current matters podcast, Yeah, but you know, we use and have been longtime subscribers of Keeping Current Matters. And that is one of our main value adds that we use to really yeah. meet people where they're at and make them feel informed and make it so that it's easy for us to understand and us to be able to deliver it to people in a way that they understand as well. 
Yeah, and I appreciate you sharing that. It's not, you know, on the podcast, like, we don't have to do an infomercial or whatever, but love right. you saying the great things about Casey. I wasn't even no. paid for this. <laughs> Most real estate agents know what's happening. Good agents understand what's happening. But great agents, they can explain what's happening. At Keeping Current Matters, we help real estate agents become experts. With market insights and marketing tools, you'll not only stand out, you'll thrive in any market. Keeping Current Matters. Be the expert. Let's shift maybe to this market and... What are things, because I want to go back to something you said. You said, hey, there are things that we need to be doing right now that we maybe did two, three, five years ago that we got out of the habit of doing. A piece of that is education. So what are the things right now that your team is doing relative to the business to address issues in the market and educate people on, should I buy a home right now? Are, are, Are there specific things that you can share with um, with folks listening right now to say, hey, this is what we're doing, and it's making an impact, and it's making a difference in in, uh, in our team and in our business? I would say for our clients, it's our social media. Um, again, we use Real Talk, um, yeah. which has been great. It's super simple. Um, again, this isn't an infomercial, but it is a value add that we use for our clients, for our team, um, to give them things that's easy to use. I would also say leaning into that a little bit more is we've started this year um, leaning into like we had this situation, obviously without disclosing people's personal information sure. or anything about them, but we've been leaning into this was the problem and this is how we solved it because people need to know the value of what we do. And I think sometimes there's a lot of glitz and there's a lot of glam and 99% of the realtors across this country are not doing it like that. Sure. You know, they're not just leaning into social media. They're not leaning into TV shows, to production, to things like that. There's a lot of hard work that goes through. Just the number of people that when someone buys or sells a home, the number of people that are also employed by the piece of that transaction is something that I think has fallen off the radar. And we really prided ourselves in our clients saying, well, that was so easy. Like you, you, that was so easy. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> only you actually really knew, right? Of course we keep them informed, but there's some things that we're like, this is our job. Like we just handle these. So we've been taking it and saying like, here's someone's real solution. Here's how we solved it. Here's the impact that it made for them. Right. And I think that consumers really need to know that, Who you hire to represent you in your biggest financial transaction, probably in their lives, it matters. And making sure that people are good stewards of that matters. And I think that's something that our messaging throughout 2024 on social media and how we show up for people and in our marketing things and all that we do is going to be about that specifically. Yeah, and that's and just to summarize that, that's sort of a case study type approach, right? We had this situation. Here was how we solved it. Here was the impact, or here's how that that came out. I think that's such a good a good point. What when you think about the market there in Colorado Springs, how is the market there? So the market here is really good. We're kind of insulated from a lot of other parts of the country because we have. Um, six military installations in Colorado Springs. So that does keep us a little bit insulated from what's going on because people are always coming in and coming out. But where the caveat comes into that is sometimes it's not right for them to buy. Sometimes they're only here for a minute and it doesn't make financial sense or they don't ever want to be a landlord. And with the new laws changing here in Colorado in 2020, into 2023, 2024, sometimes it doesn't make sense to be a landlord for people. So looking at all of that is really important. Um, The way that our team is really diving in is making sure that we're really focused in on the basics. We're really leaning into the basics, which people are going to say, oh, I know about all of those. But it's like, you know, are you making your contacts and are you showing up with items of value? If you don't have items of value, Here's a list of items of value that you can give and customize for where your clients are at. 
to make sure that, you know, if they're looking at this, you're sending them what they're looking for. Right. Um, so the way that we do that is whenever we make contact with someone and they tell us X, Y, Z, we're always setting a follow-up on that appointment. So they know when they're going to hear from us again. And the other thing that we've really been leaning into, which is going to be super shocking. It's so basic is we're doing what we say we're going to (laughs) do. I know it sounds so basic. Um, there's some other things we're leaning into. So we're really leaning into off market properties. Okay. So we're leaning into off market properties because on our team of 15, everybody goes on appointments. Not all of them are ready right now to sell their home, but they'll be ready in three months, six months, nine months, a year. We're adding them into a database so that when someone comes along and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm looking for this specific house. We have a list of potential off market properties so that we can really lean into our value as realtors this year. And we're not relying on online resources or the MLS of where they're only going to be able to find homes. Right. We're also not afraid to door knock. That's awesome. Yeah. How often are you, how often is your team doing that? Well, obviously ours is a little bit weather dependent on what's right. going on, but we are door knocking based off what someone is looking for. And another thing that we're doing is we're also door knocking during the inspection. Because we want people to know their neighbors if we can during the inspection and if they answer. And we also want to know what the neighbors are going to say before the day of closing. Right. That's which, interesting. Which is an important thing to do because the minute you meet your neighbors, they're like, oh my gosh, do you know what happened down the street or in this home or whatever? One of them, the reason why we started this is because one of our buyers bought a house they were moving in and the neighbor said, oh my gosh, I'm so surprised this house sold so quickly. And the buyers are like, why? We love this house. And they said, well, these front steps are very slippery. And so many people have fallen down these front steps and gotten hurt that we're visiting. The owners have fallen down them. They get so slippery. Wow. Never disclosed. Wow. So had we had known that during the inspection timeline, we could have addressed it. We, we came up with a great solution that worked out well for everybody um, because we always want things to be a win-win. Sure. Um, but if we had known that up front, we could have done things a little bit different. That's amazing. Yeah, I hear that. I think I think having those conversations and talking to people, right, that kind of double-ended or, or um, double goal. What do you, as you look forward into 2024, we're here end of January, um, what do you see, what are you doing differently coaching your team or even coaching agents that, that you coach um, about what it's going to take to win in this market? What, what, what are you doing to, to sort of guide people forward there? The first thing it's going to take is a coach. And I think some people listening to this don't have a coach. Yeah, I didn't start off having a coach. I've obviously been coached by Tom Ferry for over a decade I wouldn't go anywhere else. There's obviously a lot of great coaches out there and different coaches meet people, you know, where they're at. But before that, I had a peer accountability group. I had masterminds that I was in before it was a thing. So I would say someone that's going to keep you accountable to your goals. It isn't selling. A lot of people are like, well, I don't want to have a team. Great. You don't have to. But even by being a solo agent, you're still a team. You're still surrounded by your vendors. You're still sure, right. by your people. So you still have a team of some sort. It's just, do you want to have other agents that you work alongside with? So I think that being said, I think that the way that I'm coaching them, it's somebody that's going to hold you accountable of some sort, whatever that looks like. My number one is get a coach. Number two, I would say figure out what your goals are and actually do a business plan. So many people don't do a business plan and this is an actual business. So doing a business plan and then what we're doing to help people win is we're breaking it down by what do they want to do over 12 months? And then how do we build in the seasonality around that? And then how do we break it down into 12 weeks? And then from there, how do we break it down into what they want to do every single day? For most people, it's needing to make 10 contacts a day is pretty much the standard rule of thumb. So, is that, is that, let me ask you something. Is that 10 phone calls? How, how would you define the 10? How I define it is 10 phone calls with okay. people, 10 double-sided communication about real estate. Okay. 
Now, sometimes it's a text because, you know, obviously some people want to text, but it's two way conversation about real estate. It's not, I left 10 voicemails. It's not, I left 10 voicemails. It's not, I sent 10 text messages, but nobody sent out anything. And it's being specific about the message. And our messaging this year is if you're going to talk about real estate, talk about real estate. And if you're going to talk about something personal, talk about something personal. Because what you don't want to do, in my opinion, is kind of bait and switch people where you call them, they think you're being, you know, friendly. And then you're like, oh, by the way, you know, and then they're like, oh, this is a sales call. Oh, I didn't quite realize that. So I think it's just really getting to the point of like what the purpose is for the call and being really intentional about it and mixing it up, like not having every time be a business call. But I think this year it's really being intentional, like for our vendors this year, Um, we are getting ready to have a vendor luncheon to thank our vendors for standing by us and taking great care of our clients as well. And we're also going to ask them how we can support them and their business this year. We're going to write that down. Beginning of next year, we're going to say, this is what you asked us to do. This is how we showed up. So we have accountability for that. And then we're going to ask them to provide us with one or two referrals for the year. We're not asking for all their business. We're not saying it's an all or nothing thing because we want other agents in our market to win as well. And we want to have the abundance mindset. So we're like, we know you work with other great realtors, refer them too. But if we could count on you for one to two referrals for the year, that would be great. And that alone is a strategy that will help agents win across the country is just by saying, I work with this great vendor, you know, my home inspector Hey, can you just be top of mind if you come across anybody? Could you give them my name and number? And when you do that, or can you ask them if I can contact them if you come across anybody? Just It's just staying top of mind. And it's really like being clear on, I want to sell to 12 families. What are my lead pillars that I'm going to do? And how am I going to go deep on those lead pillars? So it's not having 47 lead pillars. It's really having in my opinion, four to six, and going really deep into those to make sure you're really maximizing everything. And I would also say not buying the shiny stuff. Like we're all guilty of it. You think a couple of people did that in the last couple of years? I mean, I did. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's like really when you go to conferences or when you hear things or when you're like, oh my gosh, this person's using this and that, not having FOMO. Of, yeah. Oh my gosh, I need to be doing that as well. It's like keeping your expenses low, staying true, actually looking at them and making sure that you're setting money aside for your taxes. Right. That's where people get hung up on the most is, you know, the tax bill. Right. Yeah. No, I hear you. It's practical things. How many, you know, when you talk about talking to your appraiser and lender and title rep, whoever it is, and saying, hey, one to two deals, how many agents do you think are doing that? Because I think there's a lot that are like, have the conversation, like, if I'm going to refer you deals, you got to refer me deals. You know what I mean? It's almost like a, you have the serial type, but going and going, hey, love for you to to keep a stop in mind. I would think that'd be more responsive than what most do. Right. And I think a lot of agents are like, It's either all or nothing. Right. You either give me all your business or I'm not using you. And we're like, no, we're not looking at that. We're looking for one to two for the entire year. Give some to other people. Love all of your relationships because we know you're not your, we're only relationship that you have. We respect that, you know, but it's like, if you think of somebody and we're a great match for you, how do we stay top of mind for you? You know, what do we do? What does that look like? But first we're asking them, how do we show up well for you? What do we yeah. need to do? Right. I hear what that. are you wanting from us? How can we help your business? Yeah, it comes through loud and clear. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, first of all, taking the time to say we appreciate you, right? And doing a launch and, and doing that. Um, this I, I thoroughly enjoy this conversation. I appreciate you sharing just what you're doing. So I want to put you sort of on the spot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so for people that are listening, we'll, we'll kind, of, kind of wrap up maybe in this area. What is the, somebody's going to make their 10 contacts, they get somebody on the phone or they have an interaction, what are they saying? How are you coaching that person, Treasure, on connecting? I love the don't bait and switch. Like, hey, what's up? Oh, by the way, let's have this conversation. What are they saying? 
I think it depends on who they're like, what lead source are calling from. So it, it kind of starts there. We, and we build that out. So I would say if it's a past client, then I would lean in and say, you know, your equity has gone from this to this this year. Or I would even start off a little bit backward from that and say, can I do an annual equity review for you? Can I show you what equity you've, you have in the home so that you can explore options for you that would really work for you? Um, I'd start off there. They would say yes, because one thing that two things that people always want to know is what their home sold for and what's going on with their neighbors. Yeah, what kind of improvements totally. are they doing? What are they selling for? What's going on with them? And so anytime you can lean into those opportunities, it's really great. So I would say, I would lean into, can I do this equity review for you? Can I swing by? Can we meet for a cup of coffee? Whatever that looks like. Can we talk about this? Can I get face to face with you? Because realtors are great face to face. That is really where we win. Not over the phone. Nobody right. really likes that. But we win face to face. So I would get back in front of them and I would lean in with, you know, here's your equity. Do you have any thoughts of making a move in 2024 or 2025? Once you see this number, well, no, I don't have thoughts of that because, you know, my home is worth X and I really want, you know, 700 for my home. And I think your home is worth 550. Yeah. Great. I love that. I'm going to put you into my off market database. And I'm going to put a tickler on there and I'm going to keep watching every six months or when somebody comes along that says, I'm looking for this home in this specific area. I now have something in the back of my pocket and I will tell you, this is how we won during COVID because I had this spreadsheet and I'm like, Oh wait, you're looking for this. I sold that. Let me see if they've had any interest in selling their home at all. Let me get a one-time showing. Let's get you into the house. So I really think that's how we're winning with past clients. We also did the 100K and 100K, excuse right. me, 100K and 100 day challenge. Um, that really brought a lot of things to light. And then letting people know like, okay, they want 700. You think the home is worth 550. Great. Is it okay if I touch base with you in a couple of months and we just check the value? People are going right. to say yes. Another great way to lean in with people if they get on the phone, that's a simple way, is saying, do you have any home improvement projects you're planning for 2024? Great. Well, I have an amazing vendor list. Can I send those to you for some spring maintenance items that are coming up? Another great thing is how many people after they bought their home have done a home inspection in the last three years? I haven't. Do a home inspection. Let's make sure that we're getting ahead of any items that could be potentially causing issues for people. Can I lean you into a home inspector? Can I lean you into an HVAC person? Can I lean you into someone that can put on a back deck for you that you've been thinking about? How can I be your trusted source person moving forward? That's an yeah. easy way to have a real estate conversation about what they're planning to do with their home. That's genuine and authentic and coming from a place of contribution. Yeah. And I appreciate you sharing that. And, you know, the ideas that you rattled off, I mean, the, when you started with the equity conversation, right, that's an easy opener. Question I have, uh, are you using that on text too? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've seen that, you, you know, uh, certainly has been a campaign that a lot of folks have, have used um, in, in getting that connection and saying, okay, what thought of any projects or what are you going to do with that? So I appreciate you sharing that. What about um, any others top of mind for you as people are reaching out? You know, one thing that I always did that was easy is because I think getting on the phone and thinking about what to say is hard. Yeah. Especially myself. So one thing that I would do is I would get together a couple of trusted vendors and I would say, you know, can we host a happy hour? Can we host something simple that we only pay if people show up? I'm really big yeah. on paying for who comes to play, not paying, and then nobody shows up, right? Right. So putting together a small happy hour, putting together some sort of information like, is your demographic of who you work with, are they older people that really need to be focused on estate planning and estates, you know, all of that. So can I bring someone in that focuses on making sure that everything is set up for you know, making sure their wills are in place, making sure they have estate planning. Can we do a little easy happy hour or lunch around it? And then that gives you an easy way. You know, you're splitting the cost. You're only paying for people that show up. 
which is great. You're leaning in with value. You're coming from a place of contribution. And then that gives you a reason to call because you're inviting them to something. Right. It's easy when you're inviting someone to something. And then when you get face to face, you give them, let's say two people show up. Those are two solid people that you need to follow up with. Like right. you just got one on one time. They showed up. Very right. Little. right. Um, and, and I will tell you, I've been doing this for a long time and I did one that literally one person showed up to. And he was actually my car- my carpet cleaner. Wow. And when it happened, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. And I was like, embarrassing to who? Nobody knows who showed up and who didn't show up. We were able to have a great conversation with him. The three of us were able to sit around and brainstorm how we could help each other's businesses. And he became one of my best clients who's bought and sold multiple homes with us. That's great. But at the time, it wasn't even, I was just so mortified that only one person showed up. You know, fast forward now, we have events with 400 people at them, but that's not where we started. Right, right. We started off with one person showing up. Yeah, I appreciate you reminding everybody of that because sometimes it can be hard to look at Treasure Davis and the Treasure Davis team and think, gosh, I'll never get there. And and you broke that down and told that story very, very well uh, mm-hmm. in, in the journey of that. Um, as we wrap up, any sort of final thoughts that you have for folks listening that maybe have been in the business a long time, that are new in the business, anybody that's in real estate that you would, as a coach, just say, hey, here's my encouragement to you as you go throughout the year? I would say that the encouragement would be really surround yourself with people that want to see you win. Mm. And shut out the noise. There is so much noise. There are so many people that are, you know, that are posting great content. Yeah. But all it is is content. There's no meat behind what they're actually posting. And I think people see that and they feel discouraged. Yeah. When it's supposed to be meant to lift them up and show them what's possible. But sometimes you look at that and you're like, oh my gosh, I won't be this. And I would say, don't ever compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 29. Mm. You know, really look at where you're at and what you're, you know, what you're wanting to do. And remember that you're only competing against yourself. It's you versus you. And if you can work on being 1% better every day and staying true to your daily disciplines and what you're looking to do. So one thing that I have my coaching clients do is set up their own daily, weekly, monthly plan. And we literally take it every single day. You know, what are the three to five business things that you're going to work on every single day? And then when we look at that, we're like, okay, how did that go? How do you feel like you won? How do you show up? How do you reflect? Like, and it starts with first having a really strong morning routine. But in my opinion, that's kind of played out. In my opinion, it's really like, how do you have the strongest evening routine to set yourself up to win the next day? Yeah. And how do you set up your night so that you're actually excited for the next day? And that's what I've been working on for the last two years is like, how do I have such a strong evening routine that I actually am so excited to go to bed because I can't wait for the next day. (laughs) That's great. And it isn't because my day's easy. My day's hard, you know? But it's like, how do you do that? And that's really what we focus on is like, what's your morning routine? What's your evening routine? How do we break it down into daily, weekly? How do we have things up and visual so that every day you're reminded of what you need to do? And how do you treat this like a business? And it's different for everybody. Yeah, I hear you. I, what's in my mind right now, treasures? We've got to do this again, and that's okay. what I want to talk to you about. Okay, let's talk okay. about nights. Let's talk about mornings. Let's talk about treating your business like a business because that's that's certainly a difference maker. And I, and I just got to say this: I have thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. Uh, and, and thank you. Shout out to you, uh, to Dean, to Leanne, to the entire Treasure Davis team for making an impact in the world. Um, It shines through in how you talk about your business. So thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. You know, I love any time that I get to listen and learn from you. And, you know, thank you for everybody at KCM. You guys are helping us to make the idea of data and numbers easy and easy for us to share with our team, our clients, everybody. And so thank you for that as well. 
Well, we well, the feeling is mutual. We're grateful for the support for what what we do, and uh, from our entire team to you and your team, we are grateful. Thank you for the time we've got to spend today. Thank you so much. Have a great day. All right. Well, that was a phenomenal conversation with Treasure. She even talked about a couple members of her team and Leanne and Dean, and shout out to them and the entire team for for the difference they make in the market they serve. You know, and I, I really... As we were having that conversation, I was thinking we've got to do this again and talk about her evening routine, talk about her morning routine, and talk about treating the business like a business. So here's what I want you to do. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with somebody that wants to make an impact in the business like this and uh, and help us get the message out because when we do business like Treasure Davis and her team do business, we make an impact in the world and that's a special thing. Thing. Grateful for you listening to the How's the Market podcast. You know, it's just a another way at keeping current matters that we want to give you the tools and resources to make an impact uh, in the world and in the business and the customers that you serve. So thank you for listening. 